doesn't take a lot to keep them warm. What you can do, if you really want your chickens to roost and they really want to roost, if you take chicken wire, uh -huh. or actually what is better is aluminum, and you wrap the trunk of your tree uh -huh. in that the predator can't climb the tree. Okay. And the bird can get down and can get back up. Uh -huh. And that will keep that very, very safe. And I've seen people who do other things with like mosquito netting. Mm -hmm. And then in the morning they just go up there and lift the net. Mm -hmm. And that keeps anything that might want to come flying in mm -hmm. out of there. And you can do things like that. So there are things that you can do if you really want to raise your chickens the way, you know, probably 75% of the world raises their chickens. Mm -hmm. uh, you can do that. Now, again, the concern is winter. You have to find some way of giving them enough cover to where they can stay warm. And, and that can be a very, very small thing. Mm -hmm. It could be a very, very small thing in a tree if you've got a good limb. It's almost like a tree house. Right. Well, and, the, and they'll go up in there and you put some straw in there. Yeah. And they'll be fine, especially if, if you don't want to put a door on it, if you face it away from the prevailing winds, mm -hmm. so they're not sitting in there and they have winds going. Right, that's another big thing. I that's mean. another thing to take. And so if you're aware of your environment, mm -hmm. you're aware of what your primary predators are, mm -hmm. and you're aware what their skill level is. What their <laughs> skill level is, you can do a lot of things to keep your chickens in a very, very natural state. Mm -hmm and enjoy the bird and then still make use of its services. I mean, and, and that's one of the things about chickens is what, why do we want chickens? Eggs. Eggs. Oh, but they're great with rattlesnakes too. What else do we want chickens for? Eat our scraps. Eat, eat our scraps. scraps. Yeah. What else do we eat want chickens predators. for? Eat predators. They will, eat they bugs. Will go, eat yeah. bugs. Bingo, that's a big one. That is a big one right there. One of the problems we have in our place is that we live in this really, really beautiful piece of heaven that has a lot of water. Consequently, we have a lot of mosquitoes, and we don't have any chickens right now. And chickens will walk around and just decimate mosquito populations. They just go crazy over them, especially, and like we lived in a place where our main bug problem was earwigs. And we would gather up earwigs, and I would feed them to the babies. So the babies became habituated to earwigs, and so when they went outside, what they did was go after the earwigs. Nice. And, you know, I, when we were on the road, a little toad about this big jumped into our chicken pen. It lasted about eight seconds. Mm -hmm. And the hens were just, we had three hens, and they were just, bam. Yeah. And, that, and they will control snakes. Mice. Yeah, snakes. Mice. 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 They will control mice because if you, if you get the bigger breeds, a bantam rooster this big, mm -hmm. oh. will, you know, <laughs> the bigger breeds will just decimate mice because they're bigger than the mice. Uh -huh. And they can do some real, and chickens will kill scorpions. Mm -hmm. You know, was one of the things they use them for in Mexico is they just let them run around because the scorpions are running around and they will kill scorpions. Nearly, you know, so, and they scratch up our garden spaces. And what comes out their butt is just wonderful. Is, what comes out their butt is just pure gold. It's just, you know, that, it just pure gold. So they provide a variety, plus they're just... Entertaining. Entertaining. Oh, yeah. <laughs> one, of the most, one of the most adorable things you can ever see in your life is a mama hen with her little babies waddling around behind her, you know, mm -hmm. ducking through the bushes and everything. It's just the cutest thing in the world. And they're the most entertaining creatures there are because, boy, do they like to squabble. I mean, they don't fight nasty, especially the oh, hens. Oh, sometimes, 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 well, sometimes they do when they got to re reestablish. The hens, <laughs> when the hens are having, you know, that whole thing about being henpecked, I know why roosters sometimes don't go in until at night because if you have a particularly aggressive hen, and the thing about chicken flocks is that the rooster is enormously important. The rooster, however, is not in charge of that flock. The job of the rooster is to protect the flock, and every now and then a rooster will go in and you'll see the rooster getting after a hen, and it's because she's being that way, <coughs> and she's out of control, and the rooster will go in and do something about that. The oldest hen in your flock is in charge <coughs> of that flock. And, and you know, and so that it's really interesting that they're, the order of the, 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 the I'll get you in just a second. The, main, the, the, the structure of the chickens is that they are a matriarchal animal. And, you know, and that's why the boys are expendable. Uh, and <coughs> when I was doing it in the city, you weren't allowed to have the boys. Which, and what you would find is uh, one will kind of take on that rooster uh, uh, habits or behaviors. The problem is what is he's they, saying is that they, that one that you're attributing rooster 
uh -huh. characteristics to is actually the matriarch. Yes, yeah, actually. And right. so if you even have the rooster there, she'll <laughs> she'll still do that thing. She'll still be. So what I did when I had, when I did when yeah. I couldn't have a rooster is that I became the rooster because uh -huh. there has to be a rooster. Maybe in, I was in the rooster pack. in their eyes. I didn't know. If, if you're if you're the one that's coming out and bringing them food, mm -hmm. and you're the one that's out there, and every now and then you pull a chicken out, and that chicken doesn't come back. Mm -hmm. And if you go out there, you know, I'll go out there and I'll see hands squabbling, I'll just pop them on the beak like that. If you do that, if you correct their behavior, mm -hmm. you're the rooster. You okay. don't have to be a man to be a rooster. Okay. You just have to be in charge. Mm -hmm. And so you're the rooster. I found a really, this is just totally by accident. I've, I've had a couple different small flocks. I had a lot of big breeds, you know, a lot of big hands. I had about, you know, 12, 15, you know, sometimes 17, right? By chance, I had a bantam rooster, so he was smaller than all the hens, and it worked out really, really, really well, you know, in terms of their social structure and dynamics. He couldn't, like, you know, turn one of the hens into a sex slave yeah. or whatever, right? Because, I mean, you know, he, yeah. he fathered some babies, but it was mainly he held the position of the rooster, but he was smaller than the girls. Mm -hmm. And it worked out really well. I had no fights amongst the hens yep, because he was there. I had, you know, he didn't abuse any of the girls uh, and he did his role as a rooster. And that's, that's one of the, you know, there, it's one of the many solutions, especially if you live in an area where you have a lot of people. They, they were contained. They had to be contained because of predators. We had yeah. bobcats and, and so coyotes having a big and raccoons. Rooster. So we had a, we had a small rooster and a Pretty impermeable run and coop. So, and, and, and in you know, in in town, the problem with not having the big problem with not having roosters yeah. has a lot to do with the, with the egg. Exactly. And the thing about eggs that they've discovered is that for people for, for men my age, our bodies stop producing testosterone like it used to when we were young and dumb. But we need to test on in our system, and what they have found is that a fertilized egg mimics testosterone in the male body. It kind of convinces our body that we're still producing testosterone. And so eating a fertilized egg is actually beneficial for aging men. And so losing that ability to, and the reason why people don't want roosters is because they hear talking to them too. Roosters don't oh, no. Roosters. Well, my gal would do it. Yeah, they, they, they'll make noise. You know, most people equate hand noises with, uh -huh. and that's what they really think they are. We've had it. We had a hand that would. We had this leghorn that laid an egg every 18 hours, and felt the absolute need to announce the laying of every <laughs> egg. <laughs> and we would. We're on tour, and we're in a Walmart parking lot, right? And we have chickens on the bus, and you know, the leghorn's laid an egg, and you hear this, you know, trolling. Uh -huh. and this one guy came out of Walmart, he was this Hispanic man, he came out of Walmart, he got off work at like 4.30 in the morning, and his car was parked over by our bus, and he heard the chickens. And he said, I really wanted to just knock on the door and wake you up, because I wanted to talk to you about your chickens, and he came back later on. And his mother lived in Mexico still and she was an older woman she was like in her 60s and he wanted to move her to the United States and she said I don't want to move to the United States because I don't want to go there and live that way and he said well mom we'll make it so you're just like in Mexico and she said okay you can make it just like I'm in Mexico I want chickens <laughs> and he said mommy you can't have chickens in the United States in your house and she said and I'm not coming <laughs> and she, he, he, was saying, he said when my mother said I'm not coming she said you know we were talking on the telephone she said it in Mexican so I can understand her you know she wanted to make sure that there wasn't any loss of translation with English I am not coming to the United States to live with you period if I cannot have chickens in my yard <laughs> so figure it out. <laughs> so we, I talked with him for about an hour, because you know he's third generation in the United States. Only chicken he's ever seen is you know, in the frozen meat section of his grocery store. Don't know anything about chickens. Yeah. But so we had a little bit of talk about that. But you know they're they're a culturally significant animal, and one of the things that people lose when they have to come into urban areas and when they come here is they lose that cultural connection. Yeah. 
And I tell you what, we went into inner city, we went into inner city Philadelphia, and people were staring at us like, you know, what are these people doing here in this loud hippie bus? And we popped the chickens out. Within 10 minutes, we had every kid. Yeah, kids love chickens. And every woman in a four block radius was at our bus. And those, chick those chickens were the ambassador to the world. Anarchist kids who really just were wondering if they could find some way of attaching the chicken to a brick so they could throw it through a window. We're just, can we let them live indoors? Well, you, okay, can we? Sure. <laughs> Do you really Not a want great to? Idea. No. <laughs> there, there, we, and so everybody just flocked to the chickens. There's something about chickens. Dogs can do it, but there's dog people and cat people. Cats can do it, but there's dog people and cat people. Chickens just bring everybody together. And that's what we discovered was everywhere, anytime the chickens came out. I mean, we had, I looked over one day and we were, my, I was coming out of Walmart having gone to the bathroom and my wife or daughter are standing there and they're talking to a cop. And I'm going, okay, what's going on here? The cop is sitting here and he's got a chicken. <laughs> <laughs> I, was like, I haven't seen a chicken since I left the farm. <laughs> Chickens are, you know, all these cultural differences and everything we have that people think are so important. You know, I have to dislike you because you're this. You pop a bunch of chickens down in front of people and people just become chicken lovers. It's the most amazing thing in the world. I was like, wow, oh, we could have world peace. <laughs> <laughs> thing that, 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 that sort of cultural difference in the terms of management of them, is it really necessary to supplement their diet? If you have like a healthy <coughs> No, kid. but you need to, okay, what do chickens need? Chickens need to be warm and dry. Yeah. They need to be safe. Mm -hmm. They need food. Mm -hmm. Now, I have fed chickens off of absolutely nothing but food waste. Mm -hmm. I worked at a movie theater for a while. I was a janitor and I would come home with these huge bags of popcorn. popcorn. And the chickens just thought that was the greatest thing in the world. <laughs> what they need is they need protein. Mm -hmm. And if you just expose them to bugs, they'll take care of that themselves. Mm -hmm. They need some sort of scratch. Mm -hmm. And really, they can find that themselves. And they need little pebbles <coughs> because that's how they digest food. Mm -hmm. There are, you know, if you're having particular problems. Like soft shell, you can get some oyster shells. You can get some oyster shells and you can do things like that to and supplement that diet. Eggshells. Eggshells. Eggshell. Yeah, I don't like to feed my chickens. If you feed your chickens eggshells, what I do is run them through a grinder. Right. If you right. just give them eggshells, they'll start preying on their own eggs. Right? Yeah, I did. Because they'll start I seeing did. their eggs as an egg source. Do you put them in the oven and bake them first? I've never done that. Okay. I just yeah. never did that. that actually, I would put them in the compost and just... Yeah, you know, and, and, and that's another thing about chickens in compost. A great place for chickens is right next to your compost. Because they well, they, they are pretty darn it. good about spreading it where you might not want it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah it, it depends on the size of the and, 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 and relative location, where yeah. is your compost? Yeah. Yeah. Where are your, if your compost is right next to the house, you may not want to keep your chickens right Well, no, but when you're trying to build, you know, I love to have a couple wheelbarrows of compost put on the garden in the spring. Mm -hmm. But if the chickens get in there, you know, <laughs> then it's all, it's all through, but not on the garden beds where I really want it. That, that's been my one. Yeah, I haven't really had any problems with the chickens making so much right. of a mess that I couldn't continue <coughs> using my compost. But, you know, and, and when there's that <coughs> thing about anything that you're raising is that there are individual problems yeah. Yeah. that are individual to you that, you know, you come up with a solution and you, there's a chance that one day you'll meet your neighbor and your neighbor will have the exact same problem and you can say, I baked my eggs <coughs> I never had any predation. Now there might be other things that you could do to, I've never baked eggshells, I might have to try that when we get chickens, just, mm -hmm. just to try it. If you want to try something funny, what? give them yogurt. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I but it's fun to watch them eat it. <laughs> curdled milk yeah. is another thing they absolutely love. Curdled milk. Curdled milk. We have oh, no. So there you have some oh, way to get used yeah. if you're going to get these herbs. Is that a, like a... That is a, that is a, that is a, that is a, that is a uh, vitamin deficiency when they start doing this. That's a deficiency. And you can correct that with diet. Okay. And it really, what it generally means is that, you know, you might want to introduce something. You probably oyster shells. 
or something like that, or eggshells, <laughs> something you want to introduce into their diet because they're lacking calcium. Okay. They, and you know, they're, they can get lice, and lice is really, really easy. What chickens, have you ever noticed chickens, they'll go get to a dust pile? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, and they'll, they'll dust themselves. Dust pile, That's, right? Because exactly. I used to make it when it was urban, and mm -hmm. diatomaceous earth, and a nice little. I made those things too, and them. mine didn't even. They went, oh, that's nice, and went off into the. Yeah, yeah it went down. Oh, oh, yeah, mine was a real. You can use wood ash. Area. You know, oh. you can. You can. If you find what mm -hmm. I found to do, if you just give them wood ash, they look at you like. Do when we do this. I'll just go over there and find some dust. I would find where they were naturally dusting themselves, and uh -huh. I would add wood ash to that. Uh -huh. I know somebody who decided that they read somewhere that if you took a chicken and put it in a bag with ash, you could shake it. Oh, <laughs> no! <laughs> yes, and it, 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 the it chicken fine. was fine. <laughs> in the, oven. the chicken was fine. The person who did it bled. Yeah. <laughs> As a result of that, we reached consensus on, no, uh, you probably don't ever want to do that again. <laughs> and, but the, you know, you can do that, and it gets the ash everywhere. But generally, chickens will control their own lice problem. If, it gets, if for some reason you get a heavy lice problem, you want to do a couple of things. It's probably in your straw, yeah. if that's what you're using. And so you want to take all that out and clean out their kennel, can clean out wherever you're keeping them, and then introduce new stuff that you know is clean, and then maybe supplement their dusting with some ash, and that will probably take care of it. I mean, I've never had lice so bad on chickens that you know, there was nothing I could do about it. Can we back up to where you were saying really uh, you don't need to feed them, they can find, I mean, if... You need to feed them. You don't need to go to Lakeland Feed or wherever. Right. I mean, and buy what is predominantly corn. Uh huh. Is, unless you can get it organic, which is probably GMO, and all those other supplements. Chickens, for centuries, have existed with humans because they will eat our food waste. Right. That's why we domesticated them, it's because they will eat our food waste. Right. And the first step in domestication was how do we keep our camp cleaner? Mm -hmm. That was a primary concern. They would people noticed that the fowl would come through and eat all of our and eat their garbage. So why not just let them live there? Mm -hmm. So you don't need to go to the store necessarily. You know, I like to buy some scratch because it's fun, to, especially if you have kids Jeez. around. Yeah, the kids love to go out there and throw the chicken some scratch. Well, out. and you said they can find their own scratch. I don't. Uh, scratch is like candy to them, right? Yeah, it's like candy to them. It, you know, it, it, seed, it, yeah. grass seed, grass seed, any little bits of food that ends up laying on the ground uh -huh. is scratch to them, uh -huh. and they will find it. It's, you know, some people, it, it depends upon how domestic do you want your chickens. If you're in a situation, in, in urban situations especially, where the chicken is probably going to get no further than your backyard, they can sometimes have problems getting everything they need because they're not in a rural environment. Uh -huh. And a lot of people will supplement, and a lot of people will feed them all that stuff because they want to keep them confined to an area. They want them very, very, very domesticated. You are God, and they do not eat or drink without you. <laughs> if you're like me, and you kind of like to look out, sit there on your porch and watch the pigs and the goats and the sheep and the chickens all just wandering around doing whatever they're doing, unless you actually can ascertain that you have a problem, you don't need to do anything more than... Just give them your... Just give them your food waste. Yeah. And, you know, and they'll also find, and, and that will actually drive them towards eating bugs and all of the things. And if your chickens, do, if you go to the store and you buy an egg, you know, go up here to Bucks and buy an egg and crack that egg. And what you are going to see is this sickly looking, <laughs> vaguely yellow thing Flat. called a yolk. And it's because they have no real source of protein in their diet whatsoever. If you go to your chickens and you break an egg. Yeah, the darker boom. that yolk is, the more protein they're eating. So their eggs are better. And if they have access to all this stuff, you get these rich, dark, I mean, it's not even yellow, it's almost, almost orange yeah, like yolk. Sunset, yeah. that it's just, you look at that and you say, okay, that's that's food, yeah. that's healthy. Mm -hmm. You know, those little things you get in the store, I kind of like, you know, is that really even an egg? <laughs> but, so, you know, if you, if it, so it really depends upon your situation. 
what you do is feeding them. Right. Well, if we can continue on that, like I live in mostly a coniferous forest, but then we've got the garden fenced in, mm -hmm. and they've been confined to the garden pretty much, but I'm ready to let them out. Yeah, let them out. Uh, and I worry about uh, flying predators, but... Really flying predators are never the problem that ground predators are. I've never actually lost a chicken to a flying predator. I know people who have, at least that's what they're assuming. They have an owl, they're losing chickens. Who do you blame? Yeah. Who you blame? And the owl is, for, for a while we had ducks. And the owl had taken the living on a tree branch that was like 40 feet up from directly above the ducks. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, well, we might want to do something. I threw rocks at the owl every time I saw it oh, until it said, well, I can find something else you people aren't throwing rocks at me because I don't want to kill the owl. I mean, you know, I just wanted the owl to leave. So I just threw rocks at it until it went away. <laughs> But generally your predator problems come at night, when you're not home, for long periods of time. And, you know, they're either sleeping or they're out wandering around and, and there's nothing that has an eye on them. Predators, especially things like raccoons and skunks, can be extremely opportunistic. Mm -hmm. And fox, you know, a really, really hungry fox will run in mm -hmm. and grab one. During the day? During the day, if they're mm -hmm. hungry enough and they see them out in the periphery. If they're out in your forest and they're out in the periphery and the fox notices that nobody's paying any attention <laughs> day after day, uh -huh. they will run in and try to grab one. My solution to that is buy dog. Yeah. I mean, not a dog that lives on the porch. Yeah. <laughs> and looks at you and says things like, you know, my water dish is a little low. Fuck. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> a working dog. But actually, I, you know, a terrier. And then, of course, you have this other problem. What's the major predator of chickens? Dogs. dogs. Bingo. Yeah. You have to train your dogs not to eat the chicken. Right. Because yeah. otherwise, you can, you know, your, your, your solution to the predator problem is actually your predator problem. Right? <laughs> How do you do that? I'm well, going to get a new puppy, and I don't. Does, is anybody familiar with the breed Chinook? Uh -huh. What I do is Gay dog of New Hampshire. What I do is when the puppy is very small, I introduce the puppy to the chickens. Yeah. The puppy is very small. When the puppy gets out of line with the chickens, the hen will peck him. Uh -huh. And the puppy will learn, oh that's not the greatest thing I've ever do. Yeah. We've had adult I, my sister in law went to Europe for six months and left her dogs with us. And they were horrible. And what I finally did was is that I took the dog and I tied the dog to a tree. Uh -huh. And I took the chicken that had been killed and I tied it to his collar. Yep. And every time that dog looked at that chicken, I smacked that dog. Oh. Because the dog would absolutely not learn. And by the time my sister-in-law came back, I was going to have no chickens whatsoever. Or I was going to have to call her up and say, I have five chickens left. I expect to see your butt off that plane and in my house in an hour. Because you're going to come and do something about your dog, and I don't care that you're in Belgium. You get a fast flight, or when you get back here, your dog's going to be in the Humane Society. <laughs> because I'm not losing all my chickens to your stupid dog. Right. But and, but, and then finally the dog got to the point after about two days of this where the dog simply would not look at the chicken attached to it anymore. And I took the chicken off and petted the dog and told it good dog and let it go off in its business and hasn't looked at the chicken since. Mm -hmm. So you can train them out of it, usually. And if you can't train them out of it, now you have to make some decisions. Do you keep the dog? Do you keep the chicken? Do you find some way of making sure the dog can never interact with the chickens, which to me kind of ruins the purpose of the dog. Yeah. And then you have some hard, and I've never had to make that hard decision where I've had to say the dog's got to go because I'm not losing the chicken. When you learn to, when you learn to lay an egg, you can stay. And this one here will just wander around. You know, I've seen this one sleeping with him. Yeah. And you know, if you get if you have something like an Australian Shepherd, border collies are horrible because they the just get too hurt. Yeah. Yeah. We had an Australian Shepherd that could herd chickens. Yeah, I've heard of that before. Mm -hmm. And that's a great dog. I mean, that's kind of a rare thing, but that's a great dog. But yeah. And somebody who had Aussies and they herded. That was their job. They herded the rabbits. Mm -hmm. Got up in the morning and 
Why not the rabbits. Amazing to see. Which is another amazing thing. <laughs> so in urban, <clears throat> how many people here live in a, okay, when I say urban environment, I'm including you live in hot springs, yeah. where you have neighbors right next door to you. Yeah, I don't. So your concerns with chickens become somewhat elevated. <laughs> Smell is a big problem. The two things people Good object point. to about chickens, the reason why we don't have chickens in cities anymore actually doesn't have anything to do with any of this at all. It has to do with the fact that people who produce eggs really want us to buy their eggs and not supply our own. So in the 1950s, they started moving towards all these things of this is what we no longer want people to do. Let's make it icky. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then they got communities to pass laws banning chickens. But if you live in an urban area, or an area where you have neighbors right on top of you, and urban areas are worse because you'll have neighbors who live right next door to you who have no understanding of chickens whatsoever. Probably in hot springs, your neighbors aren't going to be too surprised when they wake up one day and discover that you've got chickens. <laughs> in Denver, your neighbors might be calling the city, and the city will now have to explain to the Denver as a chicken ordinance. But if your chickens, you know, if you live in a place where there, where chickens are illegal and you still want to have chickens, what you do is you don't have a rooster. Actually, I knew a person who had a rooster who brought his rooster in and he lived in a cage in the basement at night. And then he sent him out after the sun had come up and the rooster never crowed. So, but cleanliness is an issue. People, especially with all the stuff about, what's the, what's the chicken disease? Salmonella. No, not the no, egg disease. It's the flu. The, yes, the, the no, avian flu. Oh, oh, swine flu. Oh. The, the, the bird flu. They went to Thailand when bird flu broke out and they told all these Thai farmers that they were going to kill all the chickens. And this the Thai farmer said, no, you're not. Test our chickens. Nice. They tested their chickens. The chickens that were living on family farms were completely safe. Bird flu comes from factory farms. Yeah. Uh, and so they said, if you want to kill a bunch of chickens because you think they're spreading disease, there's a farm. It's not a farm. It's an industrial facility right over there with 10,000 chickens. Follow your nose. Follow Those your things. nose. Because <laughs> that's where the problem is. And the Thai farmers actually made the government. I mean, they were going to say, we're going to get, you know, we'll get a million of us in the streets of Bangkok mm -hmm. with our chickens. Right. And we'll just yeah. live at your house for a while and see how you like that. Right. And, but so... But cleanliness is an issue, especially with neighbors. And if you're if you open up your chicken house and it smells like ammonia, yeah. it's time to clean it. Mm -hmm. Which is when I do it. <laughs> <laughs> but and if your if your neighbors have nothing to complain about, they won't complain. So you keep them clean. How often is that that you twice a year? Okay. Yeah. I clean, clean. Oh, I cleaned my. I was in a townhouse at Green Lake in Seattle, and we had the fortunate of having the food compost bins, mm -hmm. and we could put it in. Um, I think it's just you'll need to know for your situation how frequent you'll need. I wanted to do it frequently, and so designing where they're roosting that makes sure yes. you it's design it so them. you have like. I had just this real easy. Yeah. Yeah. My mother in law took pallets and she made this chicken palace. And she can do things like she can pull out, she can slide out to the bottom. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And just dump it and nice. slide it back like in. She bird. never has to enter yeah. the yeah. building yeah. to get eggs. Oh, now, if she wants to clean it completely, she has to. And a lot of it has to do with your own sensibilities. Mm -hmm. For me, doing it, I mean, I live eight miles. From town, my neighbor. I can't. I can only see one of my neighbors' houses when they have a light on at night. Mm -hmm. I can see their kitchen light from my porch, but they're probably a half a mile away. So I don't really have a lot of neighbors. If I do it twice a year, I'm only harvesting the stuff because I want to use it. Right. And you know they need to be. And if they, if they start, if your chickens start, if you see chickens walking around, they have poop on their feet all the time. Their house isn't clean. Enough. But so it has to do with a lot of your own sensibilities yeah. too. Some people like to have a very, very clean chicken house. Yeah. Your chickens will love it because you're out there every day messing with them. <laughs> and they like a clean house. Mm -hmm. Some people will let it go further. It has to do with your sensibilities and with your neighbor's sensibilities and the consensus of the other people who live around you. Okay. 
I, I found a way to keep the odor down and to kind of be cleaner. Mm -hmm. And that's with wood chips. Yes, wood chips. My Make sure they're not treated. Or cedar. He cuts no. trees, and so I oh, have yeah. oh, it so yeah. for you. So yeah. I just, and yeah, when, uh, once I start using kind of wood chips, oh, there's no more problems. Huh? Wood chips are a yeah. wonder. Wood chips are really, really it's good for that. Like an yeah. It is. The wood, because uh, of the, you know, there's a reason why you see toilet paper from there. Wood is absorbent. I don't know. And so they absorb the, the odor, which is something that straw kind of does, it does, but not anywhere near as well. Not any, Straw is a better bedding material, yeah. especially, in the winter time. especially in the winter time, it's a better bedding material, but wood chips are absorbent, and they absorb the odor, and when you take the wood chip out, it's the odor. Cedar is not good, I don't know. What about sawdust? Yeah, it's, it's, it's sawdust, uh, sawdust uh, works too, yeah. and sawdust is probably more, it's actually, I know this from composting, sawdust is more absorbent than wood chips because it's, the chip has a hard, is solid, and has a harder time absorbing things than the surface area. Than surface just the, area. Yeah, than the, because the surface area. So sawdust will work. I try to find as many of these things as I can that I'm not paying for. So I'm going to go to him and then I'll go to you. Wait, so I saw just, I'm first. really, it's not even a question. Oh, okay. I just was going to say, I have free sawdust in Missoula if anybody wants to come pick it up. Where, are you, where do you have free sawdust from? Oh, um, it's a long story. My friend is a woodworker who built me a desk, and oh, okay. I just have it in a box. So there's a place in Missoula underneath the Scott Street Bridge yeah. that's a mill that's run by this guy named Frank, by this guy named Mark Vandermeer. And Mark Vandermeer will give you all the sawdust. You, matter of fact, he wants you to get a bigger truck. <laughs> <laughs> and the thing, and he has always has fresh sawdust because they are milling wood there nearly every day of the week. So if you can get if you can get a hold of sawdust for free, if you buy sawdust in the store, you're probably buying a product that has been treated. Mm -hmm. And it's the problem with buying wood chips in the store that they've been treated. And cedar's not good for chips. Even a small amount of it, that was actually my question. Uh, where, you know, okay, what's a small amount? Well, where I am, it's very easy to get tree crews who are constantly working to just dump chips on your driveway. Mm -hmm. They will bring you like a yard of chips. Yeah. And, and who knows what's in there? Is there probably a lot of fur. There's probably some cedar or something in western mm -hmm. Washington. Maybe some hemlock, stuff yeah. like that. If it's, a, if it's mixed chips, I wouldn't worry about it as much. Pure cedar yeah. is problematic. Okay. How do you, um, I used to use straw. How long do you need to let it sit before you can put it in your garden? You don't have to let it sit at all. No. Just open the jail and throw it in. Mm -hmm. No, but for, uh, to right. put it in your garden. Mm -hmm. Oh, how long do you have to? Yeah. You know, it, well, it, how often do you need it in your garden? Right. Okay. That's the big question in there. I, you know, like I will clean out, I don't clean out all that often. And when I need it, I just, sometimes I clean it, you know, like in the wintertime especially, I have no need for, for the straw. I just pile it up. And then we'll use it later on. You know, a lot, next year. Do, yeah, a lot of it has to do with, you know, if you're once a week, you're not getting enough manure content, manure urine content in your straw for it to be of any real benefit. So I probably, you know, depending upon, you know, during gardening season, how often you need it, once a month, you can clean it out mm -hmm. and use it. If you're really, if you need it that heavily, otherwise, you know, you can let it stay for a while. There's a stage which I call pre-ammonia. Oh, I'm going to steal the cookies. Okay. All right. We, we bag ours, and once you get on a cycle, you know, if you clean in the fall and you can set it where it's dry, you can use it if you feed them. You have feed bags, that works good. Oh. And then, you know, you just keep it where it's not going to get wet and wash, washed out. You know, and then you put that on in the spring, and you clean in the spring, and you put that so per, so you get a cycle going. Yeah. Okay. So it's about a year. So it, you know, I don't know what it really takes to, for it to not be too hot. Too hot. Well, then we can talk about it. that's the problem with chicken manure. Yeah, mine's back to predators. Mm -hmm. This is internal predator where they we had we got ten babies from the same, well, two different flocks, two different types, mm -hmm. but one of them, they started picking on one and drew blood, yeah. so we yeah. separated it, mm -hmm. but, and that was until it healed, and that was about a week and a half, 
Well, we reintroduced it to the fl entire flock, and it seemed okay. And then they were finally able to go out into a coop because we didn't have it ready. Mm -hmm. Well, she's still ostracized, mm -hmm. and I'm very concerned. She's getting fed, but if she even, like if I throw food out in the mm -hmm. run, and she goes for a piece, somebody will go and go after her. So there's a couple of things you can do about that. If you, you know, if your, if your goal is, is to get her integrated into the flock, and sometimes that simply cannot happen. But if you can go out there and when you're feeding them, and you know, brooms are wonderful things, because if you take your broom out there with you, you can just go to the hens that are picking on her until they learn, until you teach them, they don't get to do that. Okay. It's kind of like having, you know, it's kind of like having a kid that's being bullied. Mm -hmm. You know, if you can teach the bully that you can't do that bullying and stuff. There are, I have had occasions where I simply could not integrate the hen into the flock, and I had to move, and I had to move the hen along. Now, my preference is to find another home. If I can't do that, my next preference is, well, we're having chicken soup that night. <laughs> and which, and attaching that to roosters. Roosters can be very aggressive, and that's why people don't like them, because they can be very aggressive. And you can train roosters to not be aggressive. Sometimes, sometimes they simply won't learn it. They're just aggressive. And there's this thing called the vowel change solution, and it's that rooster becomes a roaster. And sometimes that's all you can do. <laughs> environment and a need for that because again I'm like back in my the Hawaii thing where they just seem to have the babies, yeah. the babies oh, yeah. and, uh, but when I was in my Green Lake situation I would have had to have a separate like yeah. facility because it introduced brood yeah. they might kill the baby they're not going to kill the babies okay they won't so. kill them no they, they're not if, if you have that sort of internal predation going on you have a real problem Unhappy chickens. You have really unhappy chickens, and yet, okay, okay, what's going on with them? They're not getting enough food. You have one that is simply too aggressive and needs to go somewhere else. And the thing about it, don't give your aggressive chickens to somebody else. <laughs> Unless they say, no, this is the only chicken I'm going to have. I just want to have a chicken. I don't care if the chicken's aggressive. Because it's like you're just passing a problem on to somebody else. And, you know, we tend to pass the problems along to our friends first. And then our friend says, yeah, you're the one that gave me that aggressive rooster that made my kid bleed. You know, so I try not to pass aggressive animals on to somebody else. But you have a real problem in that situation. There's, there, they, you know, overcrowding will lead to that sort of behavior. Uh, no care whatsoever of their habitat will lead to that sort of behavior. A perception of not enough food will lead to that sort of behavior. Uh, possibly a, something missing from the diet can lead to that sort of behavior. And then the last cause is generally you've just got a bad chicken. You know? and, but that's usually the last thing. If you solve all those other problems, make sure that they're not overcrowded. Yeah, I think ours Either were... build a bigger pen or, re or downsize. You know, and, and, and generally overcrowding is the problem. Yeah, isn't there like a formula? I can't remember the formula. There is. There's a formula. You can Google it. And like for their roosting for, space yes, and everything. Yes, for how much, for how much room. Four foot per animal. Yeah. Like there's a formula for how much they need per animal. And that doesn't mean that you have to, okay, Missy lives here. The habitat is big enough. Well, that's good to hear. I never tried little chicks because I, I had been sort of told that you, you, know, you just couldn't do it together unless even you know, there's all kinds of things. But would, I guess just the temperature would be a concern. No, that's not even a concern. Really? Mama okay. will take care of that. Chickens have been raising babies for somewhere in the neighborhood of, I don't know, pick a number, 150,000 yeah, so years. That's, I, they know, they I just didn't want to go I know organic the farmers who that's have free range chickens who are not allowing their mothers to birth and raise their own babies, and it's because they don't think they can. Now, there are, <laughs> there are some groups of chickens. Sounds familiar. You know, 
There are but some the breeds of chickens. <laughs> leghorns, <laughs> leghorns are terrible at it. Yeah. They have been they have been factory farmed for so long mm -hmm. that the breeding instinct is all gone. Mm -hmm. There are some chickens that are better at it, and some chickens that are worse. And if you can find mm -hmm. a breed of hen that is by its nature broody, Orpingtons. Buff Orpingtons uh, are really, really good at that. That's a wonderful thing because they'll not only raise their young, but you can stick other eggs underneath them and they'll raise them as well. If you have a hen who's ignoring her eggs all day long, never sits on them, just lays them and goes away, you can take those eggs and put it under your fruity hen. And in the end, when the chicks are born, they'll work it all out. Because the truth is, is that mother hens like to run around with their chickens. But in like any kind of attacked village, every hen is a mother hen. So every hen will protect the babies, whether they're hers or not. Just like all of us should be doing. You know, if, so if you can keep them in that village, you know, environment, they'll take care, they'll lay their own eggs, they'll set their own eggs, they'll birth their own babies, they'll take care of their own babies, they'll raise their own babies up all by themselves. I know people who actually, I know this guy who had to leave, I'll get to him in just a second, he had to leave his house. He left his house for three years. When he came back, he had 30 chickens. He left with 10. <laughs> <laughs> they had, you know, he left the door open for them. They had taken care of, they'd, they'd secured their own habitat. <laughs> and he said the interesting thing was though is that he pulled up and he said, I can imagine that other people probably pulled up in that driveway, but I don't know if they had to. He pulled up in the driveway and the hens came out. And he said, pretty soon I was surrounded by hens. He said, it was just like the old days. They were looking at me like, food? <laughs> what did you bring us? <laughs> you know, you're, you're here, where's the food? But they had taken care of themselves. And chickens really can be that independent. There's a whole, myth, there's all kinds of mythology that we've developed about chickens. And to me, they're all designed to do one thing and one thing only to send us to the grocery store to go buy an egg. Or, and to send us to, you know, in, in our neck of the woods, it's Lakeland Peak, to go buy the heat lamps. <laughs> you know, to go buy the little thingies that automatically turn the egg so you don't have to do that yourself. Anyway, <laughs> all it's, 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 to me, it's a classic example of American laziness. And it's like, you know, you don't want to water your own lawn. You know, you want, this magic thing to happen where every, you know, twice a day or whatever, water suddenly appears from the ground. Instead of going out there with a hose and a sprinkler and watering your own lawn, you might notice something's wrong. And you might be able to fix it because you were actually paying attention. So. So I went to Mother Earth Fair. Yeah. And bought a dozen of um, duck eggs. Yeah. Because if you have cancer, they're more alkaline than yes. chicken eggs. Mm -hmm. So I was buying them for my husband and then I thought well if they're fertilized I can just put them under my chicken yeah so I did that yeah. and I let her raise the ducks yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a thousand, yeah, a thousand pounds. and the thing about my daughter is extremely allergic to chicken eggs there's something about the protein she eats a chicken egg and she feels like her stomach's bleeding Mm. She can eat duck eggs though, mm -hmm. because they have a slightly different protein. Mm -hmm. They're more alkaline. Is that what it is? Well, that's for the, for the for cancer. Yeah, that's different. They the yeah. ducks are they don't scratch as much they either, don't. so you can, they're mm -hmm. good for the grass. Mm -hmm. I'm big on grasshoppers and yeah. Here <laughs> and I heard that uh, Jill told me that her ducks mm -hmm. were great because you can't I can't really let the chickens out because the mulch was straw and. You know, it's not that they oh, want to destroy the garden. But, but they love that mulch. They love that mulch. <laughs> yeah, and I ducks spend more time that. raking and scooping and repiling mulch. Here, here, then I'll go to you. Kind of a, a newbie question, but what's like a fair price on chickens? Like, uh, oh, to pick say you're up. going to buy a chicken, mm -hmm. like, oh, well, what am I looking at as an so initial investment in chickens? That is a different so, <laughs> <laughs> so, it depends on how do you... What level do you want to start at? You're a new person to chickens. You don't want to start raising chicks. No. You no, want, I want to start with want the at, most basic. You want at least. I actually wouldn't even start. With the yeah. okay. I would start at a fully mature bird mm -hmm. that has gotten that is fully feathered, 
And you know, it depends. If you go to the Sanders County Fair, which may have already happened. It's happening. It's happening. Mm -hmm. You can pay a lot of money for chickens. What does that mean? Well, I, you know, I saw somebody who was, they were selling their, their hens for $6 a hen. I think that's a little outrageous. Oh, wow, I paid that's 25 Oh, okay. <laughs> 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 that's actually true. I know the market value. <laughs> but that was, so it, that was in Seattle, though, right? Oh, yeah. Very good. Seattle, yeah. Right? But I drove to Ording. If you want to I drove to the <laughs> valley. Here's yeah. what I recommend. And he had a lot of really cool Four breeds. Four-inch chickens are really... Four-inch chickens yeah. can be. What you want to do is you want if you buy the chicken from the kid who's raising it, yeah. you can get a good price. Yeah. If you go to auction, the whole point of auction is that you're overpaying for the animal, mm -hmm. because that's how my daughter was in 4-H. Mm -hmm. That's how she made her yearly money was that she sold her animals at auction. You'll pay a lot more at auction. I one time paid thirty-five dollars for a hen because I got into bidding. I'd never been to an auction before. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, for a rooster. I really wanted this rooster was a, a bark rock, and he was about this big, and he was the most magnificent creature I'd ever seen in my entire life. I, my, when I, my wife said, "Did you pay for that?" It's thirty-five dollars. <laughs> that chicken better look to be an old age. <laughs> a lot of those. Uh, what I recommend is there's this thing called Craigslist, of course, which we all know. Right, and yeah. there's always chickens on Craigslist. Experiment. Mm -hmm. I like Jerry. The, the you know, 4 H clubs. Uh, you clubs yeah, find yeah, out what you like yeah. and what That's you don't I'm like, and then and, and read. That's a great idea. And when you find out what you like for your purposes, then start investing money in that kind of bird. And I, I recommend multi-purpose birds. Egg layers will just lay eggs. You can, and, and I don't know if you want to eat the chicken or not. I don't foresee myself butchering any chicken so, in yeah. the future. So <laughs> if, you, if you're never going to eat the chickens, then you know you can you, you have a lot of options available in that area. I mean, leghorns are the classic egg layers, but you can get into banties. They lay smaller eggs, but their eggs are you know their eggs. You put them in the eggs. Banties are brown eggs. Yeah, if you want brown eggs, you can you know you can do you, you can do that. So th that's what I would recommend for a new person. Don't spend a lot. Of, get your setup ready because that's what's going to frustrate you. Not the breed of chicken. Right. Get your setup secure. Yeah. And then just start experimenting. And you know, and if somebody says, you know, I got four buff orphans and I want to get rid of, go get them. Hang out with them for a while. See what you think about them. They're a bigger bird. They're a multi-purpose bird. They tend towards broodiness, mm -hmm. which means they'll lay, they'll set their nest. Yeah. But it's nice to find birds that know each other. Yes. Yeah, so like each other already. Yes, it you're is. Get, like, Good. 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 Uh, a couple questions. One is just a yes or no. Is it true that the color of a chicken's ear determines the color of its egg? That's what I've been told, yes. Yeah? I've never looked at the color of a chicken's ear that carefully. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know if I can find a chicken. Where is your ear? <laughs> Where is it? It's still long enough. You have a little fiddler. Here's my thing. <laughs> Within reason, I want every animal on my farm to live very comfortably right here. Mm -hmm. I have walked around for hours with a chicken. Mm -hmm. If I can't, because I have kids, and because a lot of kids come to my house, I cannot have aggressive animals. Mm -hmm. You're not aggressive, you're <laughs> so, uh -oh. so I'm, you know, that I, matter of fact, I think somebody told me this just a couple of weeks ago, it would be a fun thing to do. See what the color of the ear is. If it's blue, see if it lays blue egg. Mm -hmm. I would be uh, more concerned with the color of the inside. Uh, <laughs> sure, but for some, if you're like selling eggs or something, mm -hmm. it's going to be a concern. People like brown eggs. They think they're better. They think they're more natural. Oh, I've heard nonsense like uh, there's no such thing as an organic white egg because the way eggs become white is bleaching. Which oh, is oh, so <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, they pop out of the egg laying sack of a bird that lays white eggs. Yeah. <laughs> And my other question is a little weirder, but I think this is a really brilliant idea I really want to try. You know black soldier fly larvae, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, I was thinking that um, how much of a chicken's protein... <laughs> Stop laughing before Sorry, I even get to... we've been talking about this for a long time. Yeah. 
how much of a chicken's protein can come from bugs? Because it seems one hundred percent of it. Well, it seems to me that one of the cheapest ways you could raise your chicken's feed would be by taking like a liter soda bottle, right? Yeah. And uh, cut poking holes in the bottom of it, getting yourself whatever roadkill you've got out there. Yes. You yes, know, yes. rats or whatever. Mm -hmm. Throwing it in the liter soda bottle with the holes in the bottom, hanging it outside of the coop, and teaching your chickens that if they bang their head into it, black soldier fly larvae. I will actually fall out. knew a person who did just that. Oh, he made. I actually know a person. He made a stand. He made a stand, uh -huh. and he had a shelf on it. Mm -hmm. And he would put his piece of roadkill in there. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, the fly, flies would come. And eventually, what would happen is that the chickens would hit that thing, and the maggots would drop off. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. And they would just go absolutely nuts. We clean up road. We have cleaned up roadkill. Mm -hmm. Our cleaned up animals that we butchered mm -hmm. by. Throwing them out and letting the chickens on. Yep. The chickens will just, Leftover carcasses? Yes, the yeah. chickens will eat Yum. every living yeah. thing on. Wait, they'll eat carcasses. Not yes. just things oh, yes. eating carcasses, but well, also Yes, they'll eat the they'll They're eat the flesh. The well, I, I work at a, a cat sanctuary and we feed the cats uh, uh, meat that's been thrown out, yeah. you know, if stores mark it off because it's past its expiration date, then we take it. We take like truckloads of meat, mm -hmm. probably like 500 pounds of it twice a week. And uh, we got some chickens mm -hmm. uh, around the cat sanctuary and whenever we're throwing out chicken products, man, the chickens are all about that. They, oh, yeah. they love a chicken nugget. They'll just chase it across the driveway. <laughs> <laughs> They'll come yeah. in all looking at it. <laughs> Just, you don't have to grind it. No, 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 just throw it out there. <laughs> <laughs> well, it depends where you live because if you have other things that like carcasses, yeah. Yeah. you know, yeah. you, don't, you yeah. really don't want to Well, that's why I think you want to hang it up where they well, can't get to it. Where well, you know, one thing about the smell of a, it attracts of predators. Of a roadkill. Of that device. So yeah. what you do is, you know, what you do is, is you have the carcass out there and you, you, know, you butcher the animal so it's open and everything. Mm. And at night your chickens go up. Mm. Predators will come in and they'll chew on that thing. And I've actually seen ravens standing next to a chicken, <laughs> pecking on the rope because they felt safe enough to do it. Wow. Huh. Just, they're pecking away. I mean, all birds are bird, road kills, road kill. But if you can find a way to feed your chickens an ample supply of maggots, mm -hmm. they'll worship you. That is wonderful. <laughs> That's what I'm all about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They will, you know, and you have to give them other things. They can't, you know, it's just like, you can't live on bread alone. You have to give them other things. They still have to have something that... I'll be throwing have to them, um, like, uh, sunchoke tops and stuff oh, like everything. that. You know, so no. they can have the seeds. What you can them? do right. chicken pasture. Yeah. You know, you can... Yeah, you can plot the area and seed it. Oh, we're gonna do a chicken tractor too. Yeah, and, you know, and, have them and take you, out know, you can take you can take an area that's kind of like a sacrifice area, mm -hmm. and you can seed it with whatever, whatever you have, and just put the chickens on it, mm -hmm. and they'll move them around. They'll they'll do a wonderful job on that. Is there any no no? I'm trying to think yeah. of a no no. Yeah, right. As far as eating, you know, like you have with your dog. Don't give your dog chocolate. Um, <laughs> you know, I'm trying to think of. A, there are. I cannot right. think. You know, it's really, they don't do such they, and they won't. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. You can throw. You know, so anything a chicken shouldn't eat, it won't. It, does it won't it. normally. Now we had a problem one time where we went away for a week, and our next door neighbor drained, changed the oil of his car, oh. and he went and dumped the oil on the edge of the property, oh. and the chickens were thirsty, oh. and they got into that, and it killed our chicken. He and I had an interesting talk. Oh. <laughs> in the end, he wrote a check. Yeah. <laughs> and he said, "Well, oh, what do you want me to do? Buy you new chickens?" I said, well, no. I said, "No, that's what you're going to do. Yeah. What I want you to do is go up there and clean up that mess and everything." Yeah, you want to yeah. dig up all that soil, brownfield remediation, brother. Yeah. That's what I want you to do. Yeah. What I want you to do is to have not been an idiot when we moved here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what you're going to do is you're going to clean up that mess because I've already called the owner. Uh -huh. Bill and I know each other real well, and you're going to buy those birds, and you're going to explain to my daughter how your actions led to their death. Oh, good. That's what you're going to do. What I want you to do is move. <laughs> <laughs> and and, and all, all that happened, and then the next month, Bill evicted him. Oh. <laughs> for what? Being an idiot. For me having, to, for being an idiot. He oh. said, did he make... Did he make good? Did he yes. restore? Oh, okay. No, Bill said, 
I had to have a 15 com minute conversation with your neighbor who lived there longer than you mm -hmm. about chicken murder. <laughs> <laughs> right after breakfast. Mm. It's manslaughter. I don't think he intended it. I don't it. like you. He said, I don't know you. Chicken slaughter. He said, I don't know you. And now I don't want to get to know you. What I'm going to do is never have this conversation again. You're a bigot. Oh. I'll have the caretaker yeah. come by and hang the notice on your, on your door. Sure. Yeah. Oh, sure. Okay. So, hmm. so um, I don't know how much time we have left. Are we going to talk about um, butchering and, and the like? Yes, we can talk. Let's leave in the butchering. <laughs> well, I don't know if, it, you're, if other people are. Oh, ready you, for that. you were going to show us why we shouldn't <laughs> kill. Yeah, our this has to do with butchering. If you have oh. people do this thing where yeah. the chicken egg production starts, okay, chicken egg production starts going away. People want to give her that hand. Now, you have a hen, you look out at your flock one day and you got a hen out there that's eight years old and she's laying an egg about every three days. What is that hen doing for you? First of all, she knows how to live to be eight. Yeah. She, and she has taught all of her young how to live to be eight. It's kind of like, would you kill your grandmother because she couldn't get up and make breakfast every three days? Any more than every three days? No, because they have wisdom and in a chicken flock, they share that wisdom. So I'm, you know, this idea that I had a friend who, she got chicken, we had to leave, and I gave her my chickens. And one of my chickens apparently lived to be 18 years old. Wow. And two days before she found it dead, it dropped an egg. Oh! <laughs> the golden egg. You know? And I said, what'd you do with that egg? She said it was delicious. <laughs> what do you think I was going to do? Save it so you can look at it? <laughs> And I said, chickens can live very, very long lives, and they hold wisdom. And so, if you want to have an intact one, can we go to the van? Yeah, I didn't think so. Why don't you just lay down and be quiet? So, I, what I'm trying, what I want to do is I want to raise my animals as naturally as I can, which means we have multi-generational chicken families. Now, there comes, a, you know, and butchering old chickens because they're old means you're making soup or you're making dog food. Yeah. Because an eight-year-old chicken is not very yummy regardless of its breed. Because it's old. <laughs> and most roasters they kill before their yeah. first year. As yeah, they do. As soon as the egg production drops at all, they just whack them. And that's horrible. That's just horrible. Now, if, you, if you're going to butcher chickens, I used to do the heat up water and dunk them. I had this friend who's an organic farmer, and he says, most of the time when we eat chicken, the first thing we do is pull off the skin. Because, you know, skinless chicken is better for you. So you're not going to eat that anyway. And yes, you can fry chicken that's skinless, and it's delicious. What he does is he skins the bird. Because plucking it puts this horrible over in the air. I really, I can't eat. I know a lot of people. I know people who can't literally can't eat chicken for two, three days after the butchering process. You have feathers everywhere that you now have to deal with, yeah. and it's just not a very fun process. The best, you know, I try to butcher as humanely as I possibly can, which for me means it's done fast. And I don't just reach up and grab a chicken. I did that once. It was because this rooster attacked my four-year-old daughter. He was in her face. I grabbed it right then in midair, took it over to the chopping block and killed it. That rooster was not at all worth eating, but my daughter ran around with a chicken bone in her mouth. She insisted on eating that rooster. <laughs> so I tried to make sure. So I actually pick up my chickens, and I hold them, and I love them. I don't feed them because you don't want to butcher an animal. You just fed and I really, really care for them, and I try to really honor the fact that they're sacrificing their life for me, that mm -hmm. they entrusted me with their care, and now I'm killing them. Mm -hmm. And that's part of the deal if you're going to put, if you're going to eat your chickens. If you're not, you don't have to worry about it. And then I kill them as quickly as possible. What does that actually entail? You said you dump them on No, 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 that's, 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 getting, the that's oh, getting the okay. feather off them. That's okay. getting the feather off them. Okay. What I do is I lay them down and I have a very, very, very sharp axe hatchet and I just and and I and I this people have this thing about letting their they want to see their animal run around. No. Oh, well, I it. hold them and I actually hold them over a bucket because I don't want blood flying all over the place. 
I hold them and I pet them until they have no more life left in them. Yeah. And you can you can hold them and you can hold them in a way they'll sort of lose consciousness. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to set them and, and you can have some another device that's very sharp. You know, think of doctor's tools and stuff. And scalpels, just, utility and, knives. And, and hold them until their life force passes out. So, yeah. And how do you select which chickens you're going to put your... I go, you know, to a degree I go by, if I have a multi-purpose bird, which is what I would have, is a multi-purpose bird, I go by, okay, if I ever really, you know, how long ago did this chicken lay an egg? At about a year, I'll butcher some of them. And I'm very, very selective. I don't want to go out there and just butcher all my chicken. You, you know, you select for... Is the bird laying? You know, is the bird producing it all anymore? Is a big one. Do you? The biggest source of chicken food for me is actually, you'll have extra roosters. A flock of ten should have a rooster. That's my guideline: is one rooster per ten birds, per ten hens. If you have too many more roosters than that, if you have ten hens and two roosters, you've got cockfighting going on all of the time as those roosters try to decide who's the big bad rooster. One of them has to go. I take the one that is the most aggressive. You want some aggression in the rooster because when the fox comes, you want the rooster in that fox's face, not the hen. So you want some aggression in the rooster. But if the rooster is doing things like pecking your leg when you walk out there, that's dinner. You don't get to act that way. And so roosters are generally what I butcher. Right. You can get birds that are raised to be meat birds, and when they reach full mature weight, you butcher them. And I don't like to do that because to me, yeah. you're now factory farming. Yeah, we haven't even been, I don't think it's a consensus we've been considering that. Yeah, you know, we're I like multi here in it for the eggs. Yeah. They're, they're, you know, they're, leghorns are wonderful birds for laying eggs, but they're not very social. I mean, they are within their own thing. But like we we would go to events and the chickens would come out and after about four events in this leghorn's life she would just lay in her container all day long until everybody went away and then she would come out she didn't want to be handled right she didn't want to play with the kids generally you know she just wasn't very friendly you know, she was a magnificent egg layer and i was always amazed that you know the things that could go on our book our bus was actually taken by the St. Paul Police Department because we were doing uh, backup support work for people who were demonstrating at the 2008 Republican National Convention. And they let us take our chickens off. But we took our chickens off and we put our chickens in this backyard, the two St. Bernards, and that Leghorn didn't care if it laid an egg every 18 hours. So you, yeah, it depends on, you know, if you're raising, so I'm assuming nobody here is going to raise a bird just for me. Uh, if the bird is injured. Yeah, that's what I have. You know, like a, if a chicken breaks a leg, you have to. They can't, they have no, their bones are hollow. If they break a leg, they're kind of done. Now, we had a dog that got into a chicken, and this is something to do with body temperature, and it tore all the way down like this. You can see the chicken's esophagus. Mm. My wife was doing a street medic training at the time, and she was teaching people how to suture. Huh. So she sewed that bird up. Hmm. We kept the bird quiet and by itself for one night, and the next day we turned it to the flock. The bird was fine. Chickens have a body temperature of 108 degrees. It's almost impossible for them to get an infection. They're hmm. dinosaurs. They're dinosaurs, yeah, they're little dinosaurs. And if you watch them eat, you know, things like mice, you understand why Tyrannosaurus rex was called yeah. a terrible lizard because they think they're little twins. <laughs> <laughs> when you clean them, what do you do with the innards? And I give them to the dogs. Yeah. And what about the skinning of it then? So now, how is that so, accomplished? I'm sort of. It's just like skinning any other animal. You start down, you know, down here, uh -huh. and you cut up very carefully because you don't want to pop the intestines because right. then you've infected the meat, and it really stinks anyway. And you just cut up, and you just open them up like you would and you remove all the internal you know organs remove you know, the gizzard and everything cut the legs off. and then you just you can pull and, and you can just skin it and, and then you can just really you can just sit there and pull the skin off yeah. and it will chop, chop the legs off take the head off which you 
done when you push her. <coughs> take the legs off. Hmm? With the feathers still on? Yeah, with the feathers still on. You are skinning the animal. And what people and what like to... what do you do with that skin and feathers? Well, you know, I actually knew somebody who knew how to process... Because if you look at pictures of indigenous peoples around the world, and you see people who are indigenous who are raising chickens, they all have these magnificent necklaces mm -hmm. that are made from chicken feathers mm -hmm. because they've skinned the animal, and there's a way of processing that hide, quote-unquote, to where the feathers don't just rot and fall off. And I don't know how to do it, but I had a friend who knew how to do it, and we would give her our chicken skins. Otherwise, okay. you know, they go into the compost. Oh, they can just compost it. It's, just, it's organic matter. The feet are great for her. Gum broth. Yes. You can probably get maggots from that. Hmm? You can get maggots from that. Yeah, you can get maggots from that too. Mm -hmm. you know, one of the reasons why I like to compost them is because of all the things on a farm that gross people out, the thing that gets my wife is maggots. The chickens like them. So if you put them in the compost, though, and you let your chickens have access to your compost, they'll just sit there and go, oh, look, the maggots are hatching. How wonderful. Blah, 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 blah. And you don't have a bunch of maggots running around. You know, the maggots don't really bother me. But. Do you have a chicken recipe or egg recipe? For, what do you mean for cooking chicken? Yeah. My, you know what I, of late, what I've really been into is chicken fricassee, which is chicken in a white sauce. Big fancy name, Martha Stewart makes it really, really hard to do because she has 4,500 steps. But basically it's chicken in a, in a white, and you can fricassee any meat, but it's chicken in a white sauce. I also like fried chicken. Uh, oftentimes the birds you're getting aren't really big enough to be a fryer. You know, they just, just don't have the bulk to really be a true fryer. You know, anything you want to eat with chicken, I mean chicken soup, a lot of chickens, especially roosters, who can be a little bit tough become chicken soup, bone broth, I mean, anything you, you know. Well, what would be the best chicken <coughs> grow race if you were going to race it for its meat? Purely for its meat? Mm -hmm. uh, there's this Cornish cross. It's supposed to be an amazing meat bird. I don't really know a lot about the meat birds. Meat birds didn't, mm -hmm. do not exist in nature. Mm -hmm. Because it's really, they get too heavy mm -hmm. and they can't walk anymore. They are purely a human creation, yeah. a relatively a recent growth. human yeah. creation. I like the things like the Buff Orpington oh, yeah, is a cool. great multi-purpose bird because they're big and they lay eggs and they're just the sweetest brood. They're really good in Montana because it gets cold yes, and, and they, they just stay warm. They just That's stay warm. a good segue. I mean, before we go, winter's coming on. What do we do to keep the birds warm? Uh, make sure that they have fresh whatever you're using for them to sleep in. I like to use straw because I think straw Water. keeps them warm. Chicken nipples. Those are great. The chicken nipples. Yes. The what? On PVC pipe? Yeah. You put it, you get a, a thermos, a cooler, an insulated cooler, mm -hmm. Put on a bunch of chicken nipples and it, you don't have to worry about frozen water. Oh yeah, that's a big oh. thing is that they have to have water. But I you know, clean out their kennel. If you haven't, a builder, I call everything a kennel. Build their chicken coop if you haven't, clean out their coop. Get a, I mean, I put like this much straw in there. And you really, the great thing is, is that if you take a straw bale and throw it in their coop, they love it. they'll take care of where it needs to go all by themselves. But just make sure they have plenty of fresh, they should never see bare ground in their coop. And they have bare, if they can scratch their way down the bare ground, you don't have enough straw in there. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm talking about this thing. And then make it's, sure it's... What's the purpose for it? It's warmer. It's warmer. Okay. And they need to be in an area to where they can be, where they can clump up, where they can get close together. And if you got five hens with a bunch of straw and a, you know, in an enclosure, I don't know, this, like this, they have a body temperature of 108 degrees. It's, I have actually had chickens freeze to death, but only in Gallatin County. It's the only place I've ever lived where the temperature can consistently stay below 55 below oh. for a week. Yes. <laughs> the first year I was ever in Montana, our first winter for one week, it was 55 below. Oh. It just never got any colder yeah. and it never got any hotter. <laughs> <laughs> and we had ducks and there was absolutely no way to keep their water. I had to go out there every day and that's one of the things you have to look for is you have to go out there every day and make sure they can drink their water. So because they can't do anything with ice, and they'll go looking for water. And if you have a stock tank nearby, they'll find that stock tank and they'll drown. Yeah. Chickens cannot get in water. When they get wet, they become heavy, they sink, they drown. Is that the kind of you're talking about?
Yeah, um, I don't, just, you know, Google chicken nipples. They're these little red things, they're just a little valve, and the chicken just oh, pecks they're it. they're metal, aren't they? Yeah, and you, yeah. Can, and you can attach it to like a five gallon furnace. It's like a, like a hamster water feeder. Yeah, yeah. But a very and, they, small they, and it, it's, of that. A, it's small. clean. B, you don't have to change it every day, and C, it won't freeze. Yeah. I mean, so it's that really cold. Something it will like freeze. this, too, right? You can do it, yeah. Yeah, you know, yeah. You can, you know, or you could just take a, you know, a longer, you know, a more classic cooler, and, you know, and see if we're getting the air rectangle. out. The yeah. Yeah, and use one of those. I also wanted to add for purposes of keeping water from freezing, uh, and also it helps to keep the mites off the chickens. If you want to add a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar to about a gallon of water, oh, you I've get it uh, I've had 14 degree temperatures for yeah. days, and yeah. the water did not freeze. Nice. And the chickens, once they got used to the apple cider vinegar water, they really dug it. Yeah. Like a couple of them were early adopters, really into it, but by the end of the first day, all of them were drinking yeah. it. Oh, that's great. That also works for rabbits. I was looking after a friend's rabbits yeah. and, uh, his, and his chickens Good and idea. trying to keep the water from freezing. So how much per... A tablespoon of apple cider vinegar per gallon? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nice. A couple of last quick questions, sorry. Um, do you do any vet care for your chickens? And do, do you ever, like, wash your chickens? <laughs> the biggest... Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't know if these are you stupid can't, questions. What you but. do is you get a little toothbrush. <laughs> <laughs> and you... <laughs> brush out their feathers and everything, and you can wash them, and people who show chickens do wash them to get them nice and shiny and everything. Uh, what was the first part of the question? Do you uh, ever have vets? Well, you know, chickens... You know how like, you have a puppy, you gotta get it warm? Yeah, yeah. No, no. Most of the pullets. No. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I heard that you could use diamaceous yeah. for some of them. For lice. Yeah. Yeah, and that's you the big thing, you know. It on them and you know, and that's the big, and that's one of the biggest things. Chicken can get lice. Uh, they can get cut up. What's that? You know, they get cut up. Oh, they, nice. they, they run around. They're running around out there, and they go too close to the fence, and a little piece of welded wire or bob wire hooks on them and cuts them up. The great thing about chickens is that generally you can take them and take the injured animal and separate it for 24, 48 hours, but you know, I like to bring it indoors so I can actually look at it and see what it's doing. And they'll heal themselves. Again, they have a body temperature of 100 <coughs> degrees. They're not going to die of an infection. You know, and sometimes when they get really hurt, they'll go into shock. And you just have to make sure that you, I mean, you can't really spoon feed them, but you make sure you have water. And I will put water on my finger and hold it up to them and let them take that and treat them for shock. Uh, otherwise, the biggest problems with chickens is they can do things like break their legs, and they're done then. The other thing I want to throw out there real quick is chickens flying. Yeah, I wanted to bring up the cracking of the leaves, so, and there's good YouTube videos. So. There's, yeah. What people do is they, trim, what I do is I trim one wing. One wing because they can't fly if they're off balance. Now there are people who will do things like crop their wings, and I think that's cruel because you're going to bone and ligament, and you're removing a portion, you're basically doing, you know, you're removing a portion of the limb, and I don't like that at all. You can take one wing, cut all the feathers down to the wing, and let them go. They won't fly because they're off balance and they can't. <laughs> And now the feathers grow back and you have to do it again maybe. And if you have a bird that just won't stay in. So would they be able to fly enough to, to roost in a tree at that point or would they just not even make the effort no, if they're off balance? No, they would be too off balance to do that. So if then you they have, have the, If you have roosting yeah. chickens that you are allowing to roost in a tree, that's not a good strategy. Yeah, but they probably, if they're flying, they're probably just flying to roost. To roost. Yeah, the problem is, is that if you live in an, in an area where you have neighbors and your neighbors right, so are always complaining area. because the chicken's over the fence right. mm -hmm. and is in their yard. Mm -hmm. So you can, ju and in that situation, your chickens aren't going to roost in an urban area anyway. So that's the only reason, though, for keeping them from flying is, like, I've already decided, okay, I'll let them out of the garden now, uh -huh. you know. And so. I don't have neighbors. The other thing I wanted to throw yeah. out there real quick is that chickens can be wonderful in gardens. They can also be horrible. Yeah. What you do, what I do with my chickens, because they'll go through and eventually they'll say, "Wow, look, they grew these tomatoes just for me." <laughs> what I do is right around dusk when the bugs come up, I will let the chickens in the garden. They don't care about your tomatoes, but they care about those bugs. 
they will oh. eat all of those bugs until it gets dark enough that they put themselves up. And then they go to bed on all happy tummies. And you shut them up and then you shut up your garden and then you can do the same thing the Great next day and the next day. Oh. Because otherwise chickens will eventually see that garden is exactly what it is, a food source. Uh -huh. And they can, they I mean, well they scratch up the dirt and they eat the things. Yeah. And you can quickly lose large portions of your gardens to your chickens. Yeah. But if you just, if you let them have access to it, because the garden attracts bugs, bugs come up, the chickens go eat the bugs, the chickens go to bed, everybody's happy. Mm -hmm. Ah, that's good. It can be just on their way into the coop. Yes. Yeah. Just so run them to the garden. garden. Nice idea. Run them to the garden, you know. Manage, you know, it's like everything else. You, know. <laughs> you can let them be as you can let them be as natural as you want, but also realize that you've now put them in this environment to where they're not in a completely natural environment. So you're managing them, and so you want to do some management of them, and that's really otherwise they learn bad habits, like the garden. We had geese one time to garden. We finally had, back to years of time to garden. We had geese. And the geese got into the garden and everything down to this. Oh, yeah. Everything in the garden was down to this. We had goose that holiday. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, and as far as protecting chickens, let's throw this out there real quick. Geese are really good. Yeah. Because geese are, are, can be highly aggressive. And they will go after predators. And one goose with a bunch of chickens will help protect your chickens. And even some things like dogs. Should you raise it together? Yeah. And the goose goes up and gets big. They'll protect your chickens. I mean, you can just introduce a goose. The goose is, I've never had a goose get aggressive with the chickens. 